Well, we are motherfuckers, and it is again time for movie time. And we're going to be talking about X-Men Days of Future Past. Now, this movie was amazing to me. <laughs> um, this was a real pleasure getting to see this movie, especially after seeing Godzilla, how fucking terrible that movie was. And this is also great to see an actual good superhero movie after being disappointed by Spider-Man, by Amazing Spider-Man 2. This was a real pleasure. Now, this movie just works. It is, when you say a movie is well done, um, you have to be talking about a movie um, in the style of Days of <laughs> Future Past. So, you know, we all know that this is a classic story arc from the comic book. It was even done in um, the uh, the cartoon, like a version of the story even. Um, and, and this is just, uh, it's it was the right story line to pick. Um, now, you knew that they had this planned out before time, you know, ahead of time with um, X-Men First Class. But the way how this just ties everything together, you know, I, I like that they didn't completely um, write off the uh, the original Brian Singer movies. Um, you know, I, I, I like that first class, um, you know, w wasn't exactly like a full-on reboot. Like I, like, I think it was almost intended to be that at first to be a reboot, to reboot the whole entire series. But thankfully they reconsidered, which is something that they really should have did with Spider-Man, and now they're off Shit's Creek and they can't get back down it. Um, performances in this movie. I really, really, really like James Mac McAvoy as, uh, as Xavier, and Michael Fassbender as Magneto. Um, these guys just put on great performances, you know, and the fact that when, that how they flash between the past and the future, it's expertly done, you know, just the way how they show everything, the presentation, it is just, it feels great, and it's like, almost like reading, you know, comic book panels, the way how they're going back and forth, it is like, the exact opposite of like Godzilla. Now, how can I compare these two? For example, here, let, let me discuss this because you people praise Godzilla, so I have to do this. Um, see, the thing is with Godzilla, every single time something exciting happened, they cut away from it, cut away from it, cut away from it, and showed you something boring. Here with X-Men, they know exactly when to cut away, and, and they do it, in such a skillful way that it's not annoying, it's like you want it to happen. And so they're flashing back and you're, you're getting to see things. Basically, spoiler alert, it's basically Kitty of the X-Men has got Wolverines, you know, um, he's sending his mind back into the past, you know, sends him back into the past, you know, like his whole body, he's got the bone claws, this is pre-Wolverine before he, his Weapon X, um, you know, so they go back there and they play on the past in just a great way, you know, and, and, and it's not cheesy, you know, like a lot of times when they go back in the past, they do these fucking stupid ass jokes, you, you know what I'm talking about, you know, playing off of the past and all that, but they actually do it in a pretty good way. Um, n nothing stupid. There were no shaking my head moments, no SMH moments to be had, really. You know, that was the good thing about this. It avoided being corny, cheesy, dumb, cheap in any way. It actually felt like a movie that was there and was trying to be good and it succeeded. Without trying too hard, mind you. Which was very, very refreshing. This movie didn't try to be, you know, make you laugh. <laughs> you know, with, with dumbass jokes. No, it just, it stuck to it. There were funny parts 
but because they were funny, not because they were trying to be funny, but it was natural humor. The humor came at the right parts, like Quicksilver. He was a bit of comic relief, but, you know, they made him cool at the same time. And that's the thing. You know, even though some mutants don't get the spotlight, you might think that they deserve most of the major ones or the ones that are there in showcase. They're done in the right way. So you don't have to worry about it being like X-Men Last Stand where just they completely fucked everybody up and just, you know, made everybody feel cheap. No, this is every character is very valuable here. Um... So when I use the word refreshing, it's because, you know, I, I, I'm used to disappointment with a lot of these superhero movies. I, I'm used to getting annoyed at things. I'm used to, uh, uh, to characters being cheap. You know, the director and producers and the writers treating them as cheap, just everyday characters, not realizing that they're superheroes with years and years of legacy behind them, and they have to be treated as such. And that is what they did with this movie. They treated everybody as a valuable player, and, and that is exactly, you know, how superhero movies should be done. This is a, this should be used as a template for the future superhero movies so they don't fuck up and do shit like Amazing Spider-Man 2 where everything is just a complete, you know, not everything. It's, it wasn't that bad, but, you know, where they waste a lot of time, where the storyline is just, you know, completely just fucking worthless, uninteresting, and just absurd. Um, this managed to be, you know, a pretty comprehensible storyline. You know, the the fact that even that they're going back into the past, they didn't they didn't bloat it up with anything. It's basically that just Wolverine is going into the past to save the future. And um, what I really want to talk about is is the last half an hour of this movie. What a thing of of, of beauty. The last half an hour is. It, it needs to be seen to be believed. Now, you know, if you can't, you know, you can't say that this movie is perfect. But during the last half, half an hour, I think that is probably as satisfied as I have ever been with a superhero movie since Spider-Man 2. Um, I think I was even more satisfied with the finale of this movie even than with Spider-Man, to probably to tell you the truth. I mean, um, just, you know, everything just seemed to be falling together in the last half an hour, like, just like a brilliant puzzle, a brilliant painting, like, with the last final brush strokes going into it. It, it just, it felt cohesive. That the whole story was coming together and it just came around and at the end, beautiful. Just, you know, everything just comes together brilliantly. You know, and, and, and it feels like a satisfying conclusion to the whole X-Men series. And, and even, it, it even makes you feel like X-Men 3, The Last Stand, doesn't even matter anymore. You know, that's how good it is. It just makes you completely forget about that. Um, yeah, th this was just a, a, a great movie um, with special effects just used in the right way. The storyline was the perfect one to go with to wrap up the series. I'm sure they're not done making X-Men movies, but this was good. You know, um... Wolverine 2 was just boring as hell. Um, so, you know, this movie made me forget about that. X-Men 3, that cheap piece of crap. I, that, this, um, this movie helps me forget about those movies. It, it really does. Um, this is definitely a wholehearted recommendation. I, I, I love this movie. It, it really was, um, it was a very, very good one. Um, I give it a 9 out of 10. Like, if you're an X-Men fan, forget about it. This is a great movie, even if you're not an X-Men fan or a superhero fan even, but 
just if you're an X-Man fan, this is just this is a dream come true. I, you know, I wouldn't even dream that it could be this good. Now, I like X. I liked X too. Uh, you know, I, I thought that was a good movie. That was probably the best X-Men movie until this one. But this like outdoes it tenfold. This is a great movie, uh, and it really needs to be seen to really appreciate it. All right.